What is life after death like? I mean, it's mostly non-existent, so far as we can objectively tell, but that doesn't stop people from believing it because most people are just terrified of reality. If you notice, all of these people are singularly horrified of the idea that what appears to be true in the real world is actually true. And why is that? If I had the answer to that question, I'd be rich and the world would be a much better place. So, let's go exploring. This ought to be fun. So, today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to go and look at some post-death experiences. Now, I know what you're thinking, and trust me, it's even worse than that. I was surprised at just how ridiculous this turned out to be, and I'm actually kind of hard to surprise when it comes to religious bullshit. So anyhow, let's get down the stupidity rabbit hole and explore a post-death experience report. Sort of. Not really, though. However, it'll all become clear in the end. Maybe. Kind of. I guess. Sorry, but that's just not possible. If she's actually deceased, she would have no ability to report on anything. Granted, she could have been declared dead, and then when she stopped being dead, she could say whatever it is that she wanted to say. That just proves that the declaration was factually incorrect, and she wasn't really dead. Because dead people don't stop being dead. Just because you slap a label on something, that doesn't make it so. So, this is already not starting out well, is it? Hello, and welcome. That's, uh, um, pretty high-pitched voice you have there, pal. I mean, really, if you're going to use an obviously female voice, why would you put this dude with the scraggly beard on screen? That really makes no sense. We have all heard about fatal accidents in our neighborhoods, or we have read about them in newspapers or seen them on television. We feel sorry for the victims. They might have been young and in the prime of their lives. And that means absolutely nothing. Because dead is dead, young and old, rich and poor, male and female, everyone dies. Just because you have an emotional reaction to some people dying under very specific circumstances, that doesn't actually mean a thing. Everyone dies. Even you. Even me. Everyone is going to die. So, can we please get over the whole, it's a tragedy thing? It's just people trying to deal with the reality that everyone and everything that they have ever known or loved or have ever lived at all, that those people will someday keel over and die. Welcome to reality. Deal with it. We are deeply moved, and we also think about the victims' relatives, who have to endure much suffering as a result. We also think about those responsible for the accident, who might only have caused the misfortune during a moment of inattention. Yep, sucks, doesn't it? It's why you ought to pay attention whenever you can, because actions have consequences, intended or otherwise. Of course, none of this has anything at all to do with the subject at hand, so please stop wasting our time and get to the meat of the subject. Because honestly, all of this build-up sure looks like he's trying to get an emotional reaction out of the listener, and that's kind of manipulative when you think about it. And guess what? That's exactly what they're trying to achieve. They're not concerned with just presenting the facts and letting people make up their minds rationally. This is all about the fifis, and I think it's important to recognize the manipulative aspects of these videos. 
it's kind of dishonest when you think about it. Because, you know, imagine that. We bear in mind that this could also have happened to us. But how do these victims fare after they die? This we are unsure about. No, we're pretty sure. When you're dead, you're dead. And the dead don't come back. From every shred of evidence that we have, when your brain stops functioning, everything that was ever identifiable as you, it simply winks out like a light, and that's the end of you. It doesn't matter if that makes you happy or sad. It doesn't matter how that makes you feel. It's how things seem to work. And this is where the religious tend to get very unhappy very quickly because that's all religion is about. It's all about happiness. It's all about, will that makes me happy? It's about stroking one's ego and trying to get the most emotionally comforting beliefs that one can. And I'm sorry, but... That's just stupid. It really is. Reality is what reality is, and how you feel about it is entirely irrelevant. Your feelings don't mean a damn thing to anybody but you. Maybe you ought to try to get that through your tiny little head. After all, they have died, and one hardly ever speaks about what happens after death. But how does someone who has unexpectedly been torn out of this life feel, who now awakens in an unfamiliar world, a world they might never have thought about during their life? Because it doesn't exist. We know how all of that works, and it's not some spiritual supernatural experience. It's brain trauma, processing end-of-life experiences, and trying to spin it however it can. All of the major aspects of near-death experiences have been explained by medical science. And guess what? It's not what you people seem to think that it is. We know what it actually is, and it's not what you're trying to play it up as being. This is just another example of well, it seems to me stupidity. Trying to take a confusing experience and plug it into that emotionally comforting religious paradigm. And that's stupid too. We can imagine that the deceased person is confused and desperate at first. Well, we have a personal account from a person who really has died. No, you haven't. Death is a process, not a singular point in time. Once a person is dead, they're not coming back to tell anyone anything, because they're dead. Of course, these people, they're not really concerned with the reality of it all, because this is all about pushing a theological narrative. The brain, when it's shutting down, it's processing a lot of data, if it can, and dumping a lot of information, and that often produces memories that are then reinterpreted by the conscious mind in retrospect as something that fits within a particular religious or social narrative. It's not real. It doesn't matter how it feels. It matters what's objectively going on, and nobody ever actually dies and then later on comes back to life. Nobody ever leaves the body in any demonstrable way. But let's see what this account has to say. It comes from a woman called Catherine, who, together with her child, died in a car accident in 1960 near the German city of Hamburg. And this is an extremely common story that's been circulating for a very, very long time, and it's not any more convincing than any of the others. So let's get that out of the way right up front. The problem with all of these fantasy tales is that they aren't concerned with the reality of what actually happened. It's just a reconstructed narrative that the patient tries to work through the experience in the aftermath of, and it's only touted because it's supposed to help people with their natural fear of death. Well, big deal. Everybody dies. Deal with it. Being afraid of it doesn't stop it from happening. This is just an emotional appeal, most often done for religious reasons, and that's just not impressive. It really isn't. I don't know why you people think it is. Oh, right, because you people are stupid. Knock it off.
She explains how she and her four-year-old daughter fared in the beyond after their accident. You may rightly ask yourself how such a thing is possible. It is possible by means of a mediumistically gifted person. A charlatan, a scam artist, a bullshit con job. This is why this kind of thing doesn't impress because none of it can survive a simple evaluation from rational, scientifically minded skepticism. Because it's not about reality, it's about comfort. And as much as I know a lot of people out there just don't want to hear this, emotional comfort, for the sake of emotional comfort, is just bullshit. Reality isn't comforting, necessarily. Reality isn't here to make you happy. It is what it is, and you, as a hopefully intellectual individual, have to figure out how to deal with it. It's your job to figure out how to live within the confines of what is the real world. Making up ridiculous stories and bowing down to nonsensical gods isn't doing that. You have to do better. This personal account was communicated through the well-known Swiss medium Beatrice Brunner in deep trance on March 1968 and recorded on audio tape. Again, complete and utter bullshit. There's no way to verify any of this, which is why psychics and mediums have been shown to be cold reading con artists. James Randi made a career of debunking these complete fucking frauds, but lots of people still believe because they say things from which they can derive emotional comfort. And sorry, but that's just childish. It just is. You can find more information on mediumship and deep trance in my video, which I have linked in the description below. So, you're just trying to push complete bullshit. And that's hardly a shock, surprisingly hairy and masculine woman narrator person here. And this is really why you have to pay attention, because the people who push one load of unsupported, irrational, woo-woo nonsense, they're almost certainly pushing others. Lacking skepticism in one area makes you much more likely to accept crazy thinking in others. It's why you see the religious believing a wide range of pseudoscientific bunk. It's like, well, if I believe this one emotionally comforting thing, then why shouldn't I believe these other emotionally comforting things over there? Well, because you people haven't got a clue what rational skepticism is. You don't actually care what reality is like. And I say this a lot. These people don't care. And not caring is the problem. Maybe they should figure it out. Through this medium, the deceased woman reports on her car accident, on what she initially experienced in the spiritual world. We also know from near-death experiences that casualties are welcomed and cared for by beings from the beyond. You know, this thing just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Because not only is this not a near-death experience as I initially thought, remember, I don't watch these videos before I make them, this is just something that a scam artist made up, and unfortunately, people are buying into it. I mean, how pathetic is that? Hell, I can pretend to fall into a catatonic trance and then come back with all kinds of stories about invisible, intangible, universe-creating pixies. That doesn't make any of it true. It doesn't mean that anyone should pay any of those stories the slightest mind. Yet, the gullible are just that. Gullible. They want to believe it, whether it's true or not, because they're only interested in their fifis, and that's why they fall for shit like religion. They just don't care. How sad is that? Mediumistic messages from the deceased give us further insights into experiences in the world beyond. They show how those returning are helped to familiarize themselves with their new environment and new situation. These messages also show where those returning found support 
and a place to live. And that's bullshit. And I know I'm saying that a lot this time, but it is. This is just story time for stupid people. If you think about it, though, isn't that the same thing going on with religion? They buy into these unsupportable, irrational tales because they really want them to be true for emotional reasons, and they don't ask any substantive questions. Because why would they? They're getting the happy chemical drip in the brain that they so desperately want, and nothing else matters to them. And I'm sorry, folks, but by and large, people are just dumb, and this is yet one more example. If you're taking any of this crap seriously, you need to take one giant step back and take a look at this rationally. You need to say, this is dumb. You need to do your research. And you people have a problem with that, don't you? Stop it. Whether they want to accept this help, however, is up to the deceased themselves, since they also have their free will in the world beyond. That world that, so far as anyone can tell, doesn't actually exist. Pay your $199.95 on the way out and have a nice day. The medium has more suckers to fleece and you're getting in the way. And if you notice, this whole thing is just the narrator explaining what the audio tapes said instead of, you know, just playing them. This is another layer of nonsense laid over the last. Now, there is a link to the account in the description, and I'll throw that into mine as well, but fair warning, it's not remotely impressive. You have to really, really, really want this thing to be true and be willing to stuff your fingers in your ears and pretend that all of the clear and obvious objections aren't real before it might stroke your ego a little bit and make you go, well, okay. Like I keep saying, it's pathetic just how stupid these people really are. And I don't know how to change that. Because these people are happy being stupid. Every time I say this is pathetic, it gets worse. Come on! It is often the case that the deceased prefer to return to familiar places. That is exactly what Catherine did after her earthly death. All of this is just made up, so none of it actually happened. This is why we actually demand objectively verifiable evidence for any of these nonsensical claims, and the scam artists simply cannot supply any. You have to believe that they have these amazing powers, but they certainly can't offer anything to back up the stories that they tell. You know, give us some specific information that the medium couldn't possibly have known. How about the dead person's PIN number or the unlock code on their cell phone? Oh right, that doesn't happen because reasons. They always have a lot of excuses for why they can't do anything demonstrably useful. Yet if they can't, then what reason do we have outside of the emotionally childish, wishful thinking gullibility to take any of it seriously at all? Because I don't know. You tell me. You can read an English translation of this fascinating personal account now by following the link in the description box below. And I've provided that, as I already said. It isn't impressive if you actually ask a lot of questions and expect rational, defensible answers. It's no more compelling as a real story than reading Harry Potter. Actually, Harry Potter, at least the first couple of books, is far superior. But let me ask you this. Why in the world do people fall for this kind of clear scam crap? It's because they're terrified of the real world and not mature or intelligent enough to just deal with the world as it actually is. They have to staple on a pair of ideological goggles through which they see because the real world without those goggles is far too scary. That's why these people use these absolutely absurd worldviews. And I've talked about worldviews before. These are people who are so terrified to actually live because they're spending all of their time in a childish fantasy world playing make-believe. I can think of nothing more pathetic than that. 
So anyway, what do you think? Are you convinced by any of these post-death stories? I mean, near death is bad enough, it's just brain damage recontextualized, but all of that is easily explained and this is even worse. It's a con artist making shit up for a paycheck. I really don't get why anybody ever would believe any of this crap, but then again, I'm not a gullible fool, so what do I know? Leave your comments below, and it would be nice to find someone who actually thinks that these stories are convincing, so maybe we could have a conversation, but I'm not holding my breath on that. The gullible tend not to come out of their little holes and say, hey, I'm gullible. They tend to be, well, I can't say smarter, but you know what I mean. Anyway, I hope this shows conclusively why skepticism is absolutely necessary. You can't just buy into crap because it makes you happy. You actually have to care what's factually true and what you can prove, and none of these things can ever be shown to be reasonable or rational to accept. Please try to stay sane and ask a lot of questions and expect realistic evidentially supported answers. There are far too many people in the world who do not, and that's just pathetically sad.